Oh, hey. How are you? My name is Esteban Garcia. I'm a professor here in the Department of Computer Graphics Technology. And today I'm going to be teaching uh, the sketching module. Uh, this is sketching module, uh, I also like to call it uh, thinking with a pencil. So this is uh, made for CGT 116, uh, but you might be also in other majors. You might be MET, you even, you even might be an art student who wants to learn about sketching. Uh, so I will give you my tips and we'll do some exercises, guide you through uh, the reasons why we sketch and also uh, teach you the foundations, the theoretical parts of uh, visualization. All right, so first of all, I'm going to throw these back to you and here's, uh, I'm going to fire up my slides. Um, we have uh, thinking with a pencil. So let's, let's uh, reflect a little bit of what that means. Sometimes we're, we need to come up with an idea of something that we don't, know, we don't know how it looks like. Think about, for example, this little tank that I downloaded from the internet. How do we come up with this concept? And a lot of it will be part of a process where we're actually using our pencil and we're defining form as we go. It's a little bit like the process of a sculptor. And this is a metaphor that will bring up a lot in this is uh, the sculptor idea because you're kind of cleaning up form as you're uh, sketching. And the applications are huge. I mean, it's not just something for art uh, majors. This is something that concerns also engineering and any type of um, major that deals with building forms. So <coughs> if we think about, for example, this, module, uh, this model that we see here on 3D uh, is essentially a work of a lot of people, both artists, designers, and engineers working together to make something that looks really nice. Um, so first of all, if we want to think about visualization, we have to kind of like track back and think about, of, about our eyes and how our eyes work and also how it is a little bit like a camera. So here on this slide, you're seeing um, this tree object and it's being represented two times. Uh, here we have, or well, we could talk about also the camera, but here's the viewer on the stationary point. We have an object and then we have how that object is projecting, projected in our retina. Same happens with the camera. We have the object and then it's being projected here on the film. So in the same way that we are watching objects um, through a camera, that's how what's happening also in our eyes. So for the purposes of visualization, we're going to try to sketch things the way we see them. And there's uh, some uh, standard views that uh, will help us understand a little bit better how we uh, visualize. So here we have uh, the example of the orthographic eyeball. And this is uh, here uh, just to remind you that this orthographic eyeball is always going to be, uh, there's going to be an object, there's going to be the plane, and then there's going to be the viewer. So those are the three elements that you need to do uh, projection, to do a proper visualization. So for example, here, the orthographic eyeball is looking at this car, and what the, what the orthographic eyeball is looking at is seeing the front of the car. So um, this is like another, another view of that, but if we can think about what the orthographic uh, eyeball is looking at, it's a bunch of points that are being projected into uh, the plane. The same is going to happen in our uh, paper. So we're going to think that our projection plane is our piece of paper. Uh, so from the different views that we can look an object from, I mean, of course, there's going to be an slanted views, but we're going to have the principal views um, that are here. Uh, we're going to have the left side, the front, the right side, the top, the bottom, and the back. So those are the six ones that are uh, the ones that are used to visualize an object. So you'll see this uh, in things like, you know, manufacture or uh, engineering, things like that. Um, but then 
we want to be very economical and we want to save time too. We want to be very practical so we will only sometimes focus on the views that we need and uh, that's where the standard views come uh, to play which are the top, the right side the pr or profile and the front. Now here in the car it might be a little bit confusing because and I you know I did it on purpose because I really like making things confusing. Uh, the front view is the profile of the car like what we would say like the front of the car is actually what we see here on the right side so let's go back and think this is no question this is the top view this is the front view although you know it's the side of the car but this is the front view the one that we see here um, that is under the top view is going to be the front view and the one that is to the right is also going to be the right side or also known as the profile. So now I'm going to sketch it out here on the paper. Um, so you get the idea and right here on my slides I have um, top profile and front view. I'm going to start with the front view. I'm going to sketch a very basic, the most basic form which is a rectangular prism. And I want you to visualize this. It's going to be an object that is eight units top to bottom, 12 units left to right, and front to back is also eight units. Okay, so think about top to bottom, eight units, left to right, 12 units, front to back, 12 units. So that is, sorry, eight units front to back. So that will be our front view of the rectangular prism. So I'm gonna go ahead and sketch it here. Uh, I'm gonna start here on the bottom left of my paper, okay? And this is important that you start thinking about how these views align with each other. So I said, Top to bottom is going to be eight units. So I'm going to go. And this is going to be a really nice ex exercise for you guys to get used to uh, sketching because you want to start very light lines. So it's, uh, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very light. I'm going to do very light. And this is what I call construction lines. Top to bottom of the object. Remember, this is the front view. Front to back is going to be 12. Sorry, left to right is 12. So what I want you to do is a sketch with me at the same time. I'm doing everything very light in construction lines. Okay, I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and darken this so you get a more solid view. But normally we will just only do this at the end. By the way, this is for you and your paper. And what I'm doing here is actually an exercise. Where what we do in sketching, one part is the psychomotor domain, which means how my motions and how my brain is controlling the motions that my hand does. And this takes a little bit of practice. So when we are doing these straight lines using this grid, we're actually sketching to, we're actually practicing to be, become better at sketching. So if you're struggling with this and you have a shaky hand, that's fine, just go with it. Try to make your best straight lines because this uh, part will be useful uh, for the future parts of these sketching modules. Okay, so I got my front view and I'm gonna go ahead and label it with the proper technical writing. Okay, so technical writing in all caps. I'm gonna label this, you can see here. I'm gonna change my pencil, actually a softer pencil. I'm gonna label it, label it front. So I remember that this is the front view, okay? 
So I got my supplies here. I like to sharpen my pencil whenever I need. Okay. Nice, nice and smooth. Okay. Now I'm going to do the profile or also known as the right side of this rectangular prism. So I said front to back, so this is going to be, this is going to be the top, this is going to be the bottom, this is going to be the left side, and this is going to be the right side. So I already have uh, most of the dimensions I need. I'm missing one dimension. The dimension that I'm missing is um, front to back. So I want to know how much is that, and that is eight units. So that's the missing measure. So the really cool, the really useful thing about orthographic projection is that you already have the top to bottom. So these views should be aligned because it saves you tons of time to have those views aligned. So I'm going to do very light construction lines. And then this is still going to be the top. This is still going to be the bottom. And then I'm going to do the front to back. This is going to be the front of the object. And I'm going to go to the back. So it's going to be two, four, six, and eight. So it will look like a perfect, like a perfect square. Try to make the best straight lines that you can. Okay, and this one is going to be, I'm going to label it with technical lettering. Very important because we want to make people to be able to read our ideas. So having good lettering, in this case we're going to do technical lettering because it forces you to make these perfect circles, for example for the O, straight lines. This is going to be the profile, also known as the right side. And I'm going to do the top view. Left to right, I already have that measure. I'm going to do, I don't even need to think. I just draw a straight line. And then I take to measure front to back. Front to back is 8. This measure here will transfer here, front to back, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, sweet. Okay, this is going to be the top. And I'm done. I got all my standard views of a rectangular prism, which is the most basic uh, form that we have for now. So things to remember and take away. This, what we just did, is an orthographic projection of a rectangular prism. So for, for for you guys and gals to remember is that an orthographic projection is a 2D representation of a 3D object. So this is something that we can give to several people and they would understand that is a, that is a sketch, that is a representation of an actual 3D object. So in the next session I'm going to be uh, teaching you how to take these into the isometric plane, which is a t another type of uh, uh, representation. And also, I'll show you how to draw other more complex forms. All right. Thank you, and I'll see you later.